Hi, I'm James Moody. I'm the architect for analytics and reporting in Rational. Uh, today I'm going to show you some of the new capabilities in the Jazz Reporting Service for the second sprint of our 502 release. As a reminder, JRS is available as an optional download with Team Concert, Quality Manager, and Doors Next Generation. To begin, I'm going to build a new report. Uh, we've simplified the data model a bit here compared to the previous sprint. We combined change management and configuration management into a single entry corresponding to Rational Team Concert. Also, we got feedback from our users that when you have a bunch of types of an artifact, they want to be able to choose them here. So as an example, defects, enhancements, and stories are really all types of work items. In the last sprint, you would have selected work item here and then added a filter for type equals defect or enhancement or whatever. So we shortcut that a bit now, which makes a little bit more sense. And you'll see the same thing for test scripts and requirements as well. And these types are read from the warehouse, so if you customize your product, uh, the new types will show up here. Next, we got some feedback um, that people want to be able to preview earlier in the construction process. So now you get a persistent preview pane at the top here, and literally after my first choice, I can preview the report. I've selected work items, so now I have some results. So this gives me a little bit more confidence in what I'm building. Next, the traceability links section threw some people off a little bit. So we've tried to make it a little bit more clear that this is actually an optional step. If you want your reports to include links to other artifact types, you do it here, but you don't have to. Uh, also, I did mention in the previous video that we needed to do some work on cleaning up the data model because the relationship list that showed up there wasn't very sensible. So we've cleaned that up a bit. It should be a little bit more clear now. You'll also see in this section that we have this combo, and previously it had some very database-centric terms like left outer join and inner join, and it didn't really make sense to anybody who's not a database expert. So instead you get to pick required or optional. Next we've streamlined the graph creation a bit. So I'm going to go a little bit forward here, and I'm going to select Project and Priority so I can create a graph on those. So I'll include those as columns in my results. So I should be able to scroll up and see. Project and Priority, there we are. Now when I build my graph, the list of graph types is a little bit easier to navigate and understand. Turns out nobody liked the little spinny carousel widget, so that's gone. Uh, and instead you get to pick from a simple set of supported graphs. So I'm going to select stacked bar. Now my choices here are really much simpler than they were in the past. So I'm going to choose the category that represents each bar. So I want each project to be represented by one bar. And then I'm going to choose the subcategory that represents the segments on the bar. So I want each bar to be broken down by priority. That's it. So I can play with the sorting and the orientation just as I could before. The last improvement that I wanted to show you is, uh, is row spanning. So when you're writing uh, table-based reports, you often end up with the same entry in one column getting repeated over and over again. So for example, a requirement typically has many test cases associated with it. And so rather than repeating the requirement over and over again, our users told us that they wanted to see it just once spanning multiple rows. So let's see how that works. So I'm going to select a requirement here. And if I go to the traceability step, uh, I should now be able to find the related test cases. Let's do that. Okay, great. So if I preview this now, taking a look at the results, I can actually see that requirement number 136, allocating dividends to a cause mobile, is actually tested by two test cases, 29 and 30. So rather than repeating the requirement again, this single entry spans multiple rows. It's pretty simple, but it's quite useful, and I didn't have to do anything additional to get it. And you'll see more of these if I run the, uh, the full report. So you can see again there, there are more requirements, such as number 14, that have multiple test cases associated with them. So as we enter the end game of our development cycle, you'll see lots of bug fixing and visual polish happening over the next little while. But I think between this video and the previous one, you hopefully have a pretty good idea of what the capabilities of the Jazz Reporting Service are. Thanks for listening, and I'll talk to you again next time.